It's time to get into the NXT review. And remember, due to YouTube demonetizing almost every video I make, it's important to support the show on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Download the app or go to the website and get bonus content like Corrupted from last night and tons of other bonus stuff throughout the week. Uh, thank you guys for the support on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Shout out to Murphy F. Fox for becoming a $10 a month Patreon. Guys, what's up? Welcome to the NXT review that I'm pretty pissed off that I fell asleep during. I was wiped out from my... Uh, we had a double birthday party since m two of my kids' birthdays are near each other. We had a party simultaneously. I ate a bunch of cake, and I went full diabetes coma mode and passed out halfway through NXT. And I missed the best parts of NXT because the second half of NXT was the best part of it. Now, I thought that might happen... Uh, because of the way things were structured, Gargano and Cien Almas could open up the show usually really well, get the crowd popping, and then at some point again during the night there'd be another really good match. But this is in reverse, the championship on the line with Andre Cien Almas and Johnny Gargano. So anyway, we'll get to that. We'll break down real quick. We'll go through all the matches. And in a few minutes, if you're watching this now, look for my live video. We're going to be live in a little while. Me and Jake DeMarco uh, talking WWE Royal Rumble. Also, speaking of the Royal Rumble, uh, the sh this uh, quick review here for the NXT last night it is brought to you by WrestleRumble.com. Get your picks in right now. There's still time to win some money. There's still time to win a bunch of prizes. And I'm in there as well. See how you fare with Joe Cronin. See where I rank. Maybe I'll come in fourth and you'll come in fifth and I'll beat you and you'll feel bad. Uh, maybe you'll come in first and be like, oh, I beat Joe Cronin. It's crazy. WrestleRumble.com. That is where you want to go, guys. Get your picks in right now. Uh, shout out to the guys at WrestleRumble.com who are always amazing. Uh, I'm just, I just like those guys like a lot. Like, I mean, I'm not, even, I'm not even joking around. Like, that's, uh, I never, I haven't won anything yet. But uh, let's see here. Uh, so basically, NXT last night, the beginning of last night started with that tag team match. It was okay. It was, it was just a regular sort of match. It was, the crowd didn't have the fire that they should have or that they have had in the past at the beginning of a NXT event. But that's okay because we knew it was coming later on. So it, the whole night continued to build. In my opinion, every match got better. It climbed the ladder and ladder until we reached a fever pitch in the main event. So this match, not the greatest thing. Probably like a 6 out of 10 type of match or a C-plus match. Uh, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, uh, defeating uh, the Offers of Pain uh, to retain their titles in a little decent match that I don't need to spend too much more time talking about to me. Velveteen Dream then was up uh, against Cassius Ono. Velveteen Dream coming out there thinking he's in a boxing match because they're in Philly. Uh, Joe Frazier was mentioned many times, although I always thought that Bill Burr's crazy rant in Philadelphia years ago was the funniest thing. He said something like, he was making fun of Philadelphia because the crowd was heckling him, and he said something like, he's like, yeah, you guys put up a statue of Rocky, a fictional character in Philly, but you don't put up a statue of Joe Frazier because he's black and you can't deal with him. And I just thought that was the funniest Joe, uh, Bill Burr just ranting on the Philly crowd. But you know when you're in Philly, you know when you're in Philly it's going to be awesome. You know the crowd's going to be hot, and, and they were. I love this. I love these people. Um one of the reasons why I like Philly so much is not just because they're so likable because they're so loud nowadays. I think most m smarky type people or, you know, people that, uh, you know, really want the business to do well are going to notice the crowd. We see they've got that sort of that that tough mentality, that tough ass attitude uh, that's sort of disappearing here in Boston. In Boston, we used to be very, very hardcore here. Uh, now it's like a split. There's like a divide between yuppies and that old Boston way, but that sort of stuff is going away. That that edginess, that toughness here, um, it's sort of gone away over the years. But in Philly, it hasn't gone away, and it reminds me of the early 90s in Boston uh, or just any time in the 90s in Boston. And it still is that way. There's still a lot of – it's still a very tough city here in Boston, but, but Philly is still like 100% just don't give a damn, and that's what we all like about it. You know, so that's why I like Philly a lot. It, it reminds me of what I grew up with here. But Velveteen Dream coming out in these box, uh, this boxing outfit, he's throwing punches and jabs and all this crap. It was kind of a sideshow type of match, but it still worked for me. Everything was kind of different. You got the tag match that opened it. Then you got the Velveteen Dream's charisma, aura. Just straight. It was a little bit bizarre, to be honest. 
Um, but that being said, even though it was bizarre, it was a little bit better than the tag match. I was more interested in it because of the character of, uh, of Velveteen Dream. And because of him, I was like, oh, you know, like, dude, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm like focused on this guy. I want to see what he does next type of thing. Like, like, what's he going to do? I would have, I thought it would have been funny if the referee was, had his back turned or knocked out or something. And then Velveteen Dream just, just popped Cassius Ono right in the privates. Uh, that might've been funny. I don't know why I thought of that. Nobody else probably thought well, that would have been good, but I did just because I'm a sick weirdo. So it was what it was. Another throw, you know, it was an okay little match. The only thing I'll ever remember from that match really is the fact that Velveteen Dream wore boxing shorts to the ring. You know, I'll remember that. And that's really about it. So far, uh, NXT with a couple of, in my opinion, a couple of warm-up matches that were warming the crowd up a little bit. And then we get to a championship match with the women. Ember Moon, uh, Shayna ba uh, Baszler, 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 and Bas and Baszler. I've heard her name said so many different ways that it's been cracking me up over the last couple of days. So uh, Ember Moon, Shayna Baszler, nice build up to this match. I think um, I think Ember Moon's been doing a better job of sounding more real because Ember Moon has been somebody who surprisingly, when she got to WWE was really like, um, I want to say, kind of like, not I don't know, she was like, it sounds like she's acting, overacting a lot of times, and so I thought she had to work on that with more of like being believably tough, whereas rather than sounding like she's scripted and sort of being fake tough, I didn't really believe her, which is weird because when she was Athena on the indies, she was so reckless and crazy. Like, I loved her, man. She would dive out of the ring and do these crazy things. I had no idea that... I thought when she spoke, she was going to be, like, a dominant person. Like, you know what I mean? I thought she was going to have this crazy, tough attitude just because of what I'd seen her do for years on the indie scene. But when she got here and she started speaking, it was like, wow, she has a lot of work to do. That That is cheesy. Like, she doesn't sound good. But I noticed the other night that she has come a long way. She sounded way more convincing Still needed some work to me, but uh, Shayna Baszler is uh, around the, on the same level with her. She needs to be a, she needs to get a little bit more confident as well, I think, because they're both you know they're trying to both uh, portray like tons of confidence, and it's like they're both battling whether they can really convince me of that or not. Obviously, Shayna Baszler has the more the edge because of just how brutal she looks. She looks like a brute, um, and Ember Moon. When she came out to the ring, looked really confident and pretty badass. Like, when she came out to the ring, it was like, it's on. Like, she looks kind of like the champion. Um, so I felt like she was the champion. I felt like she kind of owned it. So I did like sort of the like the atmosphere leading up to the match. It, it was it was pretty good. I thought it wasn't going to be as that good. The match was okay. And to be honest, I really liked what they did. It was weird because they showed Shayna Baszler, you know what, you, what, she, what she's good at and what her strengths are. But she it was her weakness that ended up costing her the match. So that's what I really like. And uh, but the match was was all right. Surprising ending. I didn't think it was going to go that way. I, I I like what they did. I almost wouldn't be surprised if Ember Moon had to like relinquish the title or something. It almost felt like they were going there. There were times in the match where I started thinking that way. They didn't do that though. She doesn't lose. I don't know where they go from here. That I'll save that for another video. But I just thought the match was really good. Right now, I'm trying to sort of speeding through this review, trying to just tell you what I thought of everything. So, so far, you know, as far as NXT goes, I'm thinking, wow, this is like a, you know, a 6 out of 10 night right now. You know, 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10 night. Pretty good, but not really. Like, it's 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 been okay. And, you know, so at this point, I'm a little bit worried, you know. But uh, but right, but right, that, that match right there was the turnaround. That women's match was the turnaround because they did something different. And I like that they did sort of something different in every match. There was something different for everybody. This is one of those shows, the NXT uh, TakeOver Philly on uh, January 27th. This is one of those shows that you can appreciate the whole show as a whole once the whole thing's over. As opposed to match by match, if you're looking at it, you're like, oh, that wasn't the best either. That wasn't the best. But when you look at it as an overall show, you're like, cool, there's a tag match first. They do what they do. That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? They get the Velveteen Dream come out there. He's kind of an enigma, sort of charismatic dude. And the, the match is a little weird, but it's quick. And then they get the women's championship match, and that ends the way it ends. And that was kind of 
interesting that she's she has her in the submission lock and all of a sudden Ember Moon just sits down on her and covers her and gets the pin. She used her wrestling ability to beat Shayna Baszler and I'm just like, yeah, that's cool because you know what I mean she knows how to do this. Like she's a wrestler. She's been doing this for a long time. It's like, yeah, uh Shayna can break her arm and you know, rip her head off and all these other things, but she doesn't she hasn't been a wrestler like Ember Moon has for years. So I like that that was kind of exposed in a way. Um I enjoyed that. And then we get, man, this match was great. Alistair Black uh, versus Adam Cole in an Extreme Rules match. Now, this is Extreme Rules. This is the type of match that WWE needs to put on if they're going to call a pay-per-view Extreme Rules. If you're going to call a pay-per-view Extreme Rules, you better put something like this on, or I'm going to think your pay-per-view is garbage every year, just like last year's Extreme Rules piece of crap garbage. Um, just sick. So many great spots. There was blood, um, you know, table spots. There was, there was. What I'll say too about this match is there was stuff in this match that I saw that either I haven't seen before or I forgot I hadn't seen, or that I forgot I saw. Rather, I did. N I've never seen the ch the the chairs double st stacked back to back and had someone's point of their back driven into it like that. Not to toot my own. Well, my kids are in the room, but not to be weird, but when I was in middle school, I had a buddy back body drop me, and I said, I want to land on the point of the chair while it's standing up, and I landed on it. I, I landed on it so that I would come down, and my shoulder blade would roll off the chair, so I would come down straight on the chair, boom, and then roll off of it, and I executed that. I did it, and I have it on tape if you want to see it, but I just thought it was great because it looked, it looked sick. It looked like I broke my back, you know what I mean, and I was in eighth grade at the time or ninth grade, I forget. And they did they did that man. He he dropped him on his back on the on both chairs on the point of the chair. It looked it looked brutal. Um, there was a ladder spot. There was that chair spot. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do it again. Like I said, and the way Adam Cole landed, he landed a little bit lower. I don't know how if he got out of that okay and planned it that way, then amazing. But if not, thanks for the pain you took because it looked awesome. Just so much, so much stuff. The 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 anticipation of this match, the intensity of this match, it really felt like a war. It was, um, to me, you know, if you picked a couple of those Wrestle Kingdom matches out and said they were the top matches of the year, um, if you had Y two J and Kenny Omega on your list, you know, you maybe you think Okada's match was better, right? But if you had Kenny Omega and Y two J as the match of the year, or Okada's match as Okada that as match of the year. Um, these matches rivaled those tonight. I really, really believe that. And I loved it. Alistair Black and Cole and Adam Cole had a good little Extreme Rules match. And it was a different match than we'd see in the main event coming up. But, dude, when when Alistair Black was... Um, what, dude, the double knees through the table, that was nuts. They're outside the ring. And this guy does these double knees absolutely splattering them through the table. I have never seen that spot. There was just so many things that I, again, I either never saw it or I don't remember seeing it. And to me, that was huge in this match, in this Extreme Rules match. It was so well done. I, I just, I really enjoyed it. I'd probably give that match, you know, an 8 out of 10 or a B plus. Or an A, probably a B plus, but probably an eight out of ten. But yeah, Alistair Black's double knee stomp on Adam Cole was that like, I just came out of my chair at that point. I was like, "This is this is it's on, bro." And now we get there's no delay, there's no there's no bathroom break match. You know, it's just high octane all the way to the main event, which is Andre Cien Almas versus Johnny Gargano. Johnny Wrestling. The fans are freaking out. First of all, this match starts slow, which is well needed. A lot of the holds start slow. Let the fans reset from what they just saw. And that's the real true uh, way of doing things. Not to put some bathroom break match out there to buffer a, a main event matches. You know what I mean? You literally let your main event guys go out there and not only have a great match... But keep the crowd at bay 
let them break for a little while, then bring them back in, and then remind them, and then start going into the story. Like, they really did that. It was very inviting. This match could have ended multiple times, in multiple false finishes, several twists and turns in this match with Gargano and Cien Almas, both guys on top of their game. There wasn't really any botches that I noticed. Just absolute fire. And Selena Vega, oh my God, is she hot. God damn it, Selena Vega. Holy crap. Dude, they, they set this whole match up beautifully. It was so well done, so well told. It was it, it really was. This was, I mean, they almost overdid it, but they almost overdid it, but they didn't. And I will say that when um, when Selena got speared by Gargana's wife, wow. Like, dude, I was like, I was thinking it. I was like, is she going to come out? Is she going to come out? Like, you know what I mean? Or, or are they going to set up a mixed tag match for later? You know, where, where you know, this is going to be Selena Vega, you know, screwed up the whole match for Gargano. And I can't believe after all this, she's going to be the difference in this match, uh, you know, for the most part. And, you know, I was, I was kind of upset at that. So, but, but, but it was perfectly done. They, they, they let her get heat, heat, heat. And then Candice LeRae, bam, here she comes over the, oh, from the outside, from the fans, from the crowd. And she just tackles the shit out of, uh, out of Vega. And I want to see them beat the crap out of each other now. And that was, that was when the crowd popped huge. Several times in this match, Gorgano with his eyes rolling in the back of his head. Gorgano looking like they were going to stop the match several times. Like they may have, I love that they built that too. Like, oh, you know, geez, they're going to have to stop the match. So they, you know, Gorgano's safety, all these things. He ends up losing clean for the most part, but it's an absolute war. And it seems like Gorgano's just whole wrestling career in the WWE is a tragedy. Just he just he this guy just can't win. In the end, he just can't win. Um and and after all this, the interference from Selena Vega, the multiple shots, the multiple comebacks, the multiple kickouts, the unbelievability, he cannot put Cian Almas away. And then he finally, when Candice LeRae's gone with with Vega, they're 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 in the crowd somewhere. The match continues, and eventually Andre Cian Almas gets the victory and defeats Johnny Gargano. Candice LeRae shows back up. Gargano's defeated. He looks like he's on Dream Street. They walk up to the ramp. They get to the top of the ramp. And, man, the, the, the people are gassed. People really, really, really wanted Johnny Gargano to win. And, and unbelievably, after all that, after everything that's happened, <laughs> Johnny Gargano is attacked from behind by Tomas Ciampa. Ciampa shows up again and attacks him from behind with the crutch. Just one big shot to the back. In, just on top of everything, it was just overkill. You witnessed the absolute destruction of Johnny Gargano. This guy was just, just absolutely demolished in this show tonight. But the only people... Gargano might have been a loser, but the Philly fans were winners because this was... Just absolutely, in my opinion, the match of the year. This this tonight, that was, the, I think, the most exciting match I've seen all year. I think this beats Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega for me. It's pretty close. Like, the buildup of Jericho and, and Kenny Omega was amazing, and I had goosebumps. But this match, like, I knew it was going to be good, and I was watching it excited a little bit. But this was one of those matches that... I, I wasn't as excited to start the match as I thought I would be. And plus, I just saw Aleister Black and Adam Cole. So I was like, okay, well, this isn't as exciting as I thought it would be. We'll see. But you know that their wrestling might might get it there for you. And they did it. They brought me in. They sucked me in. They hooked me. And it was, it was, it was unbelievable. It was like... I don't even know what to say. It was like a... It was like you... It was like if I found a million dollars... And then I found a toy store. And then I went in the toy store, but then they just had all the greatest toys ever inside. I just kept finding more toys. It was it was really amazing. They just kept it was just another thing after another thing to make me happy. It, it was very bizarre. They could never 
you can't do this type of stuff on the main roster. But I just thought it was phenomenal. And, I, and, and to me, every match got better throughout the night. If you gave the Authors of Pain match a 6, and you gave the Velveteen Dream match a 6.5, or you know, then, and you gave the women's match maybe a 6.5 or a 7, and then if you gave the uh, Aleister Black-Adam Cole match an 8, well, then I would give this match for certain an 8.5. Maybe a 9. It might have been a 9, to be honest. It might have been a 9 out of 10. I don't know how you get better than this, actually. So, sh sh I guess I'll give it a 9. So, if you add all that, to me, that shows me. I don't know how you guys feel. Maybe you feel the same way. Maybe you feel different. But to me, that every match elevated to hit the perfect harmony by the main event, you don't often get that. Even in NXT, sometimes you get the first match was the match of the night, or the third match was really good, and then the main event was okay. And you go, 8.0 8 out of 10 NXT, good job. And there was one really good match and two other matches that were all okay. And that's kind of what did happen here. But not often do you get it in concession, like in consecutively leading up to the main event. And I thought that was special. So, you know, I think maybe the last time that happened, perhaps, it might have been Nakamura versus Sami Zayn. Because that main event was, that main event was awesome. But this was, too. This was one of my favorite matches. I'd go back and watch this match again for certain. And uh, just a wonderful night. And NXT TakeOver Philly for January 27, 2018. I'm going to have to go ahead and give this show, overall, as a whole show, I'm going to give the show an 8 out of 10. Uh, another uh, positive NXT TakeOver that I think was executed perfectly or well enough. I think we could have gotten a little more out of some of the earlier matches, but that's okay. It's not overkill. And it ended up hitting the climax at the climax at the end of the show. So I love that. What did you guys think about the show tonight? Please let me know down below in the comments if you're new to the channel. I hope you guys subscribe for my daily wrestling rants, videos, podcasts. Plus, we're live after every WWE event. Tonight, I should be streaming my live reactions uh, for the Royal Rumble on my phone. Uh, you guys can join in with Super Chats, donations, whatever you want to do. Just comment. I'll try to react to everybody if I can. And uh, hopefully it will work. Hopefully I'll be able to stream from my phone. And then we'll, after I'm streaming from my phone with my reaction, hopefully I will then create a new video and go live again, but right here from behind the desk so we can take your phone calls to get your opinions on the Royal Rumble tonight. I'll be flanked by Jake DeMarco as well. Uh, plus me and Jake DeMarco are set to do our Royal Rumble predictions in just a few minutes. And also we're going to be playing some PUBG after the Rumble, after the review of the Rumble, and uh, throughout the day, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, uh, hit me up on Twitter, guys. Uh, all the all the links are over there, right? I know they're small, but they're there. If you open up your window, you can see them. Uh, there's the Twitter up there, the Facebook, my Instagram, my Patreon, Twitch account where you can watch me live there, and the website as well. If you guys like what I do, um, I would definitely appreciate it if you guys would go over to patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Get all the bonus content that I have to offer over there. Last night was insane. We tried to bait Tommy. It didn't work. Uh, and some other crazy stuff happened. Plus, you get every episode of Corrupted downloadable or on YouTube. Plus, my Corrupted Corner Show. And if you guys like stuff that's not wrestling, if you're somebody out there that's like, Joe, I'm about to quit wrestling. I'm about to stop watching wrestling. I like you, Joe, but I'm done with wrestling. Well, if you're done with me, or rather, if you're done with wrestling, but you don't want to be done with me, then... What I can recommend is you go over to my other YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Corrupted Podcast. And Corrupted Podcast, we talk about news, rumors, stuff in the world, sports, drama, entertainment, and we do it with a little bit of, it's usually a little bit of comedy, so it's definitely mature audiences only, but it's a good time over on youtube.com slash Corrupted Podcast. Over 6,000 subscribers already. I'm pretty happy about that. But again, bonus content on Patreon. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you to Wrestle Rumble, guys. Don't forget, get your picks in. You guys could win tonight. And will you beat me? Will I be in the top 10? I don't know. Will you be in the top 10? Will you win the top prize? All the prizes are listed on WrestleRumble.com. My name is Joe Cronin. We'll see you tonight after the Rumble. And I'll see you in a little while for the live Royal Rumble Predictions Show.